लेट्स स्टडी सुरोसिस टू हसाइटिस नो पेशेंट विद पोटल हाइपर टेंशन कैन हैव असाइटिस असाइटिस इज अ डायरेक्ट कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ पोटल हाइपर टेंशन अनलेस प्रूव अदरवाइज असाइटिस इज अ डायरेक्ट कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ पोटल हाइपर टेंशन पोटल हाइपर टेंशन बींग सिम्टम बींग अ कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ सरोसिस Ascites is collection of fluid in the peritoneal cavity. If fluid is connected in the peritoneal cavity, we call it ascites. It is gradual progression of abdominal girth. It causes gradual progression of abdominal girth. Patients do not come early, so patients will not come early. Patients will think that they are getting fat unless they realize their their body is becoming fat more and more. when there is there is something problem there is some problem with the patient when patient becomes huge enough dads the diaphragm is pushed up and they have a respiratory discomfort patient comes at this point now patients with significant ascites will very often have bilateral pleural effusion bilateral pleural effusion and out of the two right sided is more common than left sided the minimum amount of fluid is at least 1 to 2 liter at which patient presents to us 1 to 2 liter at which patient presents to us mechanism of development of cirrhosis and leading to ascites there are two theories theories overfilling theory and underfilling theory first see the diagram here this is liver portal vein is draining the uh, portal vein is uh, draining here not actually draining there is a circulation now vessel uh, circulation in the liver where it is being drained into okay tributaries from the tributaries now due to the resistance felt from the liver if the liver is cirrhotic the resistance that would be felt by the portal vein would be increased okay there is an increased resistance for the portal blood flow for the portal blood flow within the liver okay the blood flow within the liver is being resisted by the liver okay now this resistance is increased to cirrhosis increased resistance in portal blood flow in liver is due to structural or decreased intrahepatic vasodilator decreased intrahepatic vasodilator why because the liver is cirrhotic how will it produce vasodilators as a result of this resistance increased hydrostatic pressure increased hydrostatic pressure in the peritoneal cavity which means overfilling there are hydrostatic pressure is increased in the peritoneal cavity due to no peritoneal cavity no actually portal vein basically due to the pressure the vein will leak out will leak out the blood basically the transited only fluid will come out fluid will come out transitively underfilling theory tells portal hypertension portal hypertension there would be sluggish blood flow in the portal system sluggish blood flow in portal system plus there is endothelial dysfunction within the peritoneal cavity there is endothelial dysfunction within the peritoneal cavity which releases nitric oxide because no let's study it completely release nitric oxide in, uh, and which is a vasodilator vasodilator uh, acting on the splanchnic vas uh, splanchnic circulation and causing splanchnic vasodilation endothelial dysfunction also leads to angiogenesis which again are under the effect of nitric oxide vasodilation and causing more of more and more fluid to come out of the veins leading to ascites basically fluid is leaking out fluid is not completely filling the veins and hence it is called as underfilling theory consequences of splanchnic vasodilation decreased effective circulating blood volume since blood more blood more preferentially to intestine gut and effectively going less to the other organs like kidney decreased effective circulating blood volume also because blood is not going to the other organs like uh, kidney 
like other organs intestine gut effectively so there is decrease of active circulating blood volume and hence forth there is a decrease in renal perfusion the renal perfusion decreases then what gets activated ras gets activated if ras is activated basically it will it will be releasing aldosterone aldosterone will be causing the absorption of uh, sodium to be more and with more sodium comes more water patients of ascites are in a state of volume overload volume overload because of the activation of ras system because of decreased defective circulating blood volume okay now this extra volume would mean increased cardiac output increased cardiac output note peripheral dilated and heart is going getting increased preload heart will push out blood until it fails the circulation of this patient because of increased circulation is called hyperdynamic circulation it's called hyperdynamic circulation this fluid overload is contributing towards ascites eventually now this fluid overload more and more fluid in the veins will leak out more okay and hence will lead to ascites eventually all of this started with increase in sprenkenic vasodilation decrease in effective circulating blood volume okay you have to remember that there is an if decreased defective circulating blood volume also the third thing that is undergoing that that can explain ascites is liver dysfunction liver cirrhosis low albumin which means decreased pancreatic pressure which can cause ascites okay all mechanisms in the body behave like a spectrum the body regulates it based on the need so when you give drugs you give within its limit and not cause aki by over treatment these patients are in hypervolemic hyponatremia these three mechanisms are for ascites in liver cirrhosis the ascites is so slow that patient comes late and the body has handled other parts well compensation therefore no cyanosis the ascites is slow slow that patient comes late and body has other parts well compensation किडनी बहुत सारा पानी लेकर आया ऑल डेट गोज टू पेरीटोनियल सर्कुलेशन मच मोर इज कमिंग मच लेस इज गोइंग आउट थर्ड स्पेस लॉस ओके इंक्रीज जे पी हाउ विल इट हाउ विल यू गेट टू नो डेट देर इज वॉल्यूम ओवर लोड दैट द जे बी पी ऑफ द पेशेंट वुड बी इंक्रीज इफ द जे बी पी इज इंक्रीज एंड यू कैन से डेट पेशेंट हैज volume overload pedal edema third volume space third space losses okay pedal edema nsrk nsrk pulmonary edema lower threshold for the pulmonary edema okay now most of the drugs work on spect work in spectrum dosage changes from person to person patients respond to different stages of spectrum some may have renal renal complications other may not most of the drugs work in spectrum dosage changes from person to person okay now diagnosis of this how do you diagnose and manage ascites you do an ascitic tap you do paracentesis ascitic tap or paracentesis first look for cell counts ascitic tap or paracentesis what will you look for in the ascitic tap ascitic fluid you will look for the cell counts in the cell counts you look for polymorphonuclear leukocytes or neutrophils if they are more than 250 microliter per microliter you think of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis when do you think of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis you think uh, of sbp when neutrophils in the ascitic fluid are more than 250 micro 250 per microliter 250 per microliter also you look for protein you measure sag that is serum ascites albumin gradient serum albumin minus ascitic fluid albumin it gives sag look protein okay note in light criteria for pleural fusion we take protein total protein here we take serum albumin minus ascitic fluid albumin not total albumin not not total protein this is albumin okay in a patient of a liver cirrhosis or ascites pulmonary will have pulmonary hypertension we have portal hypertension port not pulmonary sorry portal hypertension a sag of more than 1.1 high sag fluid okay high sag fluid high sag fluid that means 
meaning decreased serum albumin will be lower the gradient would be higher high sac fluid means serum albumin no uh, albumin in the acidic fluid will be less that's high sac uh, okay or if sac is less than 1.1 secondary peritonitis if it is less than 1.1 secondary peritonitis think of malignancy think of tb think of spontaneous rupture of intestine tb okay basically protein would be higher in cases like inflammation and if the protein in the albumin is uh, in the acidic fluid will be higher then the sac will be low sac will be low less than 1.1 tb malignancy secondary second, spontaneous rupture of intestines uh, secondary peritonitis now you have sent for cell counts you have sent for protein you will send for culture send fluid for culture at least 10 ml of fluid in blood culture broth instillate fluid into the broth and send the broth for analysis by culture fourth is suspected malignancy send for cytology is suspected parenchyditis 10 for amylase okay you also send uh, some acidic tap fluid for malignancy and some uh, some for checking of amylase if you suspect pancreatitis okay if you are suspecting pancreatitis along with uh, the ascites you also send the sample for amylase you send for malignancy send for cytology you also do ultrasound after an acidic tap you can do an ultrasound guided tap ultrasound guided tap okay now what is the treatment of ascites it can be non-pharmacological it can be pharmacological Non-pharmacological includes low salt diet. You tell the patient to intake less than 2 grams per day, even more stringent. They have more salt in the body, but it is diluted. So don't give more salt. You do not give more salt to the patient. Diuretics, pyrinol of 100 mg plus furosemide 40 mg. Pyrinol of 100 mg plus furosemide 40 mg. Combination drug is a lacy lactone for spinal lactone plus furosemide. Spinal lactone is 100 mg, furosemide is 40 mg. Combination drug is lacy lactone. Okay, dose can increase to four times. Now, while giving diuretics, you have to monitor the abdominal girth. Look for patient's body weight. How you will look for abdominal girth of the patient, you will look for patient's abdominal weight. You will ask the patient to measure abdominal weight every day. 0 0.5 to 1 kg per day is lost. If you are over aggressive, there is a risk of shock and AKI. Also, you do not have to be over aggressive. There is a risk of AKI and, and shock. Not most patients require this much. This much. Respond to diuretics. If not treated, refractory attest. Even more, even four times diuretics you are giving even four times the dose you are giving then also they are not being treated then you can call it refractory ascites it is a much more terminal patient and patient may not make it the next one year patient by this time would have bled by varices or going to bleed very soon by varices so better take care of it at stage of refractory ascites you can do tips okay you can do tips transular intrahepatic Portosystemic shunt, or you can do large volume paracentesis, or you can do a liver transplant. Large volume paracentesis means put needle and drain 5 to 10 liter of fluid in a day, one to two times in a week. If more than equal to 5 liters is removed, give intravenous albumin, or else body will send fluid there to replace. You have to give intravenous fluid, or else the fluid will again go into the uh, losses. Do the fluid will again go into the losses. Practically, albumin is not easily available in the country and would be quite costly. Example, 100 ml into 2 every week. Albumin. Complications with the cytis. SBP, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. It is a primary type of peritonitis, which means no trauma, no intestinal performation. We believe the intestinal wall has reduced its immune system and it's allowing the bacteria to translocate into the intestine peritoneal cavity.